George, hi, thanks for being here. Hi, lady. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, really excited because you have so many years, many, many, many years of experience bringing EFT into schools and curious as to why you brought this tool into secondary schools. Well, I've been working as a counselor in schools, as you know, for many years, and it was around the sort of early 2000s that I began to hear about this wonderful new technique called EFT. And they were talking about EFT in terms of the miracle cure. So it was just something interesting because I thought that it would be really useful to have something that I could use in schools that could act quickly and effectively that I could integrate into my work as a counselor. So I ended up reading an article by an EFT trainer called Christine Moran. It was in the BACP, which is the British Association of Counseling and Psychotherapy. It was in their monthly magazine, and it was talking about how she'd been introducing EFT into schools with lots of really positive effects. So I decided that I'd get in touch with her. So I emailed her. Long story short, she ended up doing some training up in Merseyside, where I am, and I did my level one and two with her and then started to introduce EFT into school. That's how I managed to get it into schools. And I, I think one of the things that really attracted me as I got to know about EFT was how empowering it was for people. It was a self-management tool. That's how, uh, certainly part of how I saw EFT. One of the uses of EFT is as a self-management tool. So you can teach this to young people and they can then manage their own emotions. And as we know, emotional regulation for teens is quite a challenge. They often find it quite challenging to do that. And they often don't have the tools. So this was a wonderful way of helping teens to be able to self-regulate as well as being able to offer it as a therapeutic intervention alongside my counseling skills as well. So that's how I got interested in EFT and that's why I introduced it into schools. And we've been using EFT, myself and my counsellors, I employ seven counsellors and we go into eight schools in the Northwest and we work with students from 11 to 19 and all of the staff that work with me, apart from one who's new and she's going to do a training as soon as she possibly <laughs> can. We all use EFT, so we're all counsellors using EFT in schools. How do you use it? Is it only in your counseling office or do you also teach it to the whole school? Like, yeah. what does it look like? Yeah. I mean, it is mostly one-on-one -on -one counseling. So we go in as a counseling service and the schools are very happy for us to use EFT in their schools. I do explain it to them. It's interesting actually, because Often the head teacher or the deputy who is responsible for introducing our counselling service into school is really interested in EFT. So I end up doing EFT with them first. So they get a first hand experience of what EFT feels like. I found that that really encourages people to kind of accept and bring in EFT into the school. They suddenly experience how useful and how helpful it can be. So we have no trouble convincing people that <laughs> they should allow us to use EFT. Mm, they feel the difference. They're like, wow, yeah. this is great. If this is great for me. Then, you know, why wouldn't exactly. I want to introduce it to help our students improve yeah. their well-being and self-regulation? Yes. But in answer to your question, it's mostly one-on-one. -on -one. The only other thing I would say is that I don't just use EFT in schools with students. A lot of schools have asked me to go in and talk to staff. You know, staff are also under a lot of pressure, under a lot of stress and strain. And so I've gone into schools as part of a well-being program and helped schools to enable, again, that self-management aspect of working with EFT to regulate their own stresses and strains and to help to improve well-being in schools. So I've done quite a bit of work either individually with staff or, you know, as a whole staff, even introducing EFT. We often forget that piece and go straight to the students, but it's so important to support the staff to also be able to support the students. I think you're right, because I found that when staff are introduced to EFT and they use EFT, what they then do is they encourage other students that they come across who are struggling to use EFT and they have a set of skills that they can teach them. 
Oh, beautiful. I'm wondering if you could give some examples of what results you've got from introducing EFT into schools. I think there are a range of applications for using EFT in schools. I'll give you one example of the use of EFT in the moment to deal with what's going on with somebody in that moment. So I was sitting in a pastoral office one day, waiting to start my counseling clinic in the school. And this very perplexed exam officer arrived at the door and said that a student had had a meltdown just before she went in to do her A-level biology exam. And she was in an absolutely distraught state. And would anybody be able to help because she didn't know what to do? (laughs) And somebody said, oh, George will do it. He does EFT. So she came in and she was absolutely, you know, completely distraught and was still really, really upset by what was going on. So I just literally just said, copy me. And I just started tapping. And I just started talking to her, even though I'm I'm completely melting down because I can't even, I can't even think straight. I'm not going to do very well in the exam. It's awful. It's absolutely dreadful. I didn't even start with a statement. I didn't start by, even though I just went straight through it and Mm. started tapping and tapping and tapping. And after about three minutes, she stopped crying. She blew her nose and she went, right, come on then. Let's go do it. There were about five people in the room, Eleni, and their jaws dropped, <laughs> as, did, <laughs> as did mine, as it always does in those situations. I'm sure you've been in this situation before. You know, the power of EFT at times is quite shockingly good. It's stunningly good, you know, and that was one of those moments where there was something happening in the moment that nobody knew really how to deal with. And I just started tapping with this student and immediately within minutes, she got back to herself again and completely reframed what was happening and said, right, let's go. That's an example of how you can apply EFT in the moment. Just a bit of talking and tapping, almost like a conversational tap, if you like, in the moment was just enough. That's all she needed to be able to get herself back together again. I've got a number of different kinds of examples. I'd like to talk about a student that I worked with a while ago who was self-harming. Things were incredibly difficult at home and she was really struggling to cope with it. And as a result of not being able to cope with the emotional intensity of all of that, she was turning to self-harm as a way of being able to cope. And we worked together for, I think it was for five sessions. I taught her how to, when those feelings came up, you know, to find a way of being able to stop and just tap instead of cut. Mm. So she had something as an alternative to cutting when she was feeling like that. We also, alongside that, of course, did a lot of work, a lot of therapeutic work, therapeutic tapping, if you like, to try and understand what the emotions were, what the causes of those emotions were. And we tapped through all of that. And by the time we got to the fifth session, she said that she was absolutely fine. She hadn't cut for over a month and she was feeling a lot better about things. She was able to see things differently at home. She was able to react differently to what was going on. And she was feeling much better overall. She said something which really shocked me. She said, I know students in this school who do this as well, who self-harm. And the teachers don't even know that they do. And I've been teaching them how to use tapping. Oh, wow. And that, that was a moment for me where, you know, we talk about empowering young people. I mean, this is a tool that a young person embraced and is now teaching her friends how to use this tool to resolve their problems as well. And I just thought, wow. Oh, I just had to shiver now because it's, you know, we talk about teaching kids leadership skills when actually when we empower them, they naturally step into a leadership role, which is what the student did. Absolutely. It's, oh, I love it. I love yeah, it. it's wonderful. It was just wonderful to hear that. I ended up writing an article for the ACP's journal that talked about those sorts of experiences in schools and how we can empower young people through this wonderful tool that we have. It was 2009 or something like that. So it's quite a while ago now, but it was the first time that I realized the power of working in this way, you know, that helping people to 
empower themselves to improve it, feel good about themselves, also gives them the power to help others. It never occurred to me that that would happen. So that was wonderful to hear. The, the other application that I just briefly wanted to talk about was with trauma and about how I worked with this student. He was in the sixth form at a grammar school in the Wirral, and he wanted to be a doctor. And of course, there's an awful lot of pressure on students who want to qualify to go to universities, to get a place to study medicine. Unfortunately, he had had a very, very traumatic experience and had quite strong symptoms of, of PTSD. And this was stopping him from being able to even come to school. And the school were incredibly concerned, not just for his well-being, but for his academic success as well. And so they asked me to work with him. And I used some of the EFT trauma techniques at the time to help him to work through the trauma that he'd experienced. And within 12 sessions, he was back in school. He managed to do his exams and he got his place at university to study medicine. That's an incredibly powerful example of how a young person has been affected by something that's happened to them that could derail them quite significantly, you know, at oh, least yeah. in the short term and even more possibly in the longer term. But we were able to keep him on track by moving very quickly to help him to work through that trauma. And EFT was very much a big part of how we did that. All these examples, it shows that it's not just about it works, but the efficiency, it works in ways that speed up the process of, yeah. of helping and supporting young people in a way that was unimaginable in the past. That's absolutely true. It's very clear that EFT to be a technique that is more efficient, that works much more quickly than comparable techniques. And in my everyday practice, this is what I'm seeing all the time. I'm listening to counselors. I'm a supervisor and I supervise counselors across the world. And they're all saying that if they use EFT, that they get the job done much more quickly. And they're loving that. It's about, you know, helping other people. It's you want to help them overcome the challenge they're going through as quickly as possible so that you can really actually help them. Anything else you'd like to add, or is there another example you'd like to share? There's a young man who I worked with probably about four years ago, I think it was. And there was a very large explosion at a factory. And this young man was in the vicinity and everybody was running away from the explosion. And this young man ran towards it to see if he could help anybody who might need assistance, which is an incredible act of bravery. One which he was awarded a bravery medal for, quite right. The problem was that although everybody was celebrating his heroism, they were missing the fact that he was beginning to withdraw an early sign of trauma. He was beginning to struggle to come back into school. He was struggling to meet with friends. His academic success was being compromised. He was really struggling to engage completely. And the school began to see what was going on and they asked him to come to me. And we worked through a lot of the issues that had been raised by this experience for him. He was left with a lot of things that he hadn't realized were already a problem for him. It, it almost magnified all these problems that he was managing before, but now as a result of this was overwhelming. And again, I think we did about 12 sessions and this young man managed, he was at GCSE level. So he was in year 11. So he's a 16 year old boy and he managed to do his GCSEs. And I did hear what happened. He passed every GCSE that he did. Uh, and he's gone off to college and he's, stu he's studying. He wants to help people. And so he's studying to do social care. He was doing psychology and but now he's able to go to college and do that. Um, and, and again, that was a good intervention from the school to refer him. And it was really useful that the counselor there had some trauma focused EFT knowledge and experience that we could use to help him as therapists. We know that the best therapy is co-created, you know, that we're both working to the same goals. And I think EFT is always best 
when it's co-creative and when students are very much part of what's going on, that sometimes they're actually leading what's going on. And the therapist is going along with where the student is taking them and they're listening to what the student is saying and responding to that and using the student's words and using the student's experience. I think that's the most powerful EFT. It is co-creative, just like any other therapeutic intervention. Thank you so much, George. Appreciate you taking the time to do this and to share this with our audience here. It's my joy to share and celebrate this with the world and anybody who wants to listen. Celebrate young people as well as celebrating the influence that EFT can have on all of us, including young people and teachers.